Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining. It's another edition of the MOMW Let's Update the Website stream. Hey, yo, Gonzo, welcome. Good morning. Glad to see you, as always, and thank you for the soundtrack. Can you hear the music okay, by the way? Um, is that coming in at an okay level, you know, compared to my voice? Um, but yes, check. Awesome. Music, check. Awesome. You don't hear it at all, Small? Oh, okay. Hmm. I might have to just give it a little bit of love. It's also a really quiet tune, so anyhow. Okay, okay, huh. All right. Let's, uh... All right, there we go. So jumping right into it. Um, I'm not sure if we have to do a 5.11.2. We did 5.11 point, uh, you know, oh, yesterday, and then later in the evening we did a point one. Um, but uh, if so, maybe we'll look at that. Today I'm going to make my Emacs know about PowerShell. More on that later. Uh, <laughs> had a kind of a breakthrough yesterday and ended up diving into an item that's been on the website to do for a long time, which is dropping Postgres SQL for SQLite. More on that. Um, and then, yeah, this thing is uh, a continuing to do. We got a little bit uh, done on it. Hey, Santa, welcome, my friend. Good day to you. I'm glad to see you. So, yeah, jumping right into it. First and foremost, um, make my Emacs no PowerShell. Why would I do that? Well, so we got Gonzo uh, out here doing the good work, uh, and he's actually created this neato script, which will kind of manage the workflow of interacting with the website on Windows, you know, if you're on that operating system. As you can see, my editor, though, just doesn't know anything about PowerShell. It's just using, like, a basic down here. It says fundamental. It's just a basic kind of. And, yeah, the <laughs> CRLF. That's another thing, though, I want to solve, too. We have um, in, the, in the repo. Let's see here. Get at, yeah, we have a kind of an attempt here if you didn't know taking a step back windows and linux and mac and all of that they handle line endings and by that i mean like the end of a line of text to the next one is handled differently on windows than it is for example on linux which is what i use and um and so the result is among other things when i open a file on linux i see these beautiful carrot m's uh representing the kind of the line ending of the file. But there's something you could do in Git to kind of automatically handle that so that um, people on Linux and people on Windows kind of don't really notice these things. And uh, this was my first attempt at doing that, but I also had a shower thought today, like, well, OpenMW, the project, is made by people on, you know, more than Windows and Linux and Mac. You know, there's BSD users even, you know. Um, so let's see what they do. And so let's get the Git... They don't have anything. So maybe it's this editor config, but wow, I was honestly expecting them to have some kind of a get attributes I could look at. So in any case, <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll explore this for ourselves later on though. That's like a stretch goal, I think. Um, Cause yeah, Herdrex and I tried to tackle this before and just, it was, uh, it was an interesting journey. So let's go to Emacs. And I feel like we're going to dive into my Emacs config. And I feel like I need a special place for Windows stuff. Here we go. Cool. And just for reference here, because it's not every day I'm... Well, hold up. Let's see. Let's see first off what's out there. So PowerShell Emacs. There's got to be something, right? Somebody has okay emacs wiki okay there is no official powershell mode okay fine oh my okay It's 
easier to yeah here we, okay so it's easier to use something from github so i'm inclined to go with this one um and it's not too ancient um but first i need to uh i need to remember whoops Cool, I need to remember how to actually use my Emacs config with things that, yeah, here we go, I have to spe specify, here we go. So right here on the right is my Godot engine config for Emacs, and you can see right here I'm saying GDScript mode is a git repo from GitHub, and, and I can kind of use this form to tell straight where to get the code from. So let's actually just go ahead and do this. And we'll just go on PowerShell mode. And we'll go ahead and just fill in the blanks here. And it should just work. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. I actually have a blog post about that on my website. But uh, so in the Godot engine editor, there's a spot where you can set an external editor. <clears throat> and uh, the uh, GD script language server, which the Godot engine I think comes with at this point. At one point it was an optional uh, compile flag, but it comes with a language server program and that's basically what drives it all. And uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's obviously nowhere near as good as using in terms of like speed and ergonomics. It's honestly nowhere near as good as using the default, uh, you know, Godot engine editor, but yeah, it's cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm trying to think um, what else I would need for this. Because there's... In my Lua, here we go. We can do this. We don't want any hooks, but we'll try to do this in, in it. It's my code for opening Pico 8 files as Lua. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, thank you, Gonzo. That's a good call out, by the way. And yeah, it was like when I was working on Godot Engine, it was honestly like a, you know, it was very inconvenient to, um, Oh, geez, I'm editing the wrong file. It was very inconvenient, though, to switch from, like, Emacs that I know and love, right, and into, uh, you know, the Godot editor, which is just completely different. Um, and, indeed, it was nice to just stay in Emacs. All right, now that I'm finished derping it up over here, PS1, PowerShell mode... Okay, uh, we don't want this. I think that's all we need. Yeah, well, and uh, thank you, Gonzo, for mentioning that. And I will also echo that uh, Godot Engine editor is made with the Godot Engine's UI API. So, I mean, their editor is good and their UI API is, you know, <laughs> solid in my uh, experience. So here we go. We're going to install PowerShell mode. Hopefully it's going to be that easy. Just this code right here. <clears throat> the Emacs Lisp required to get me all set up to do Windows stuff. Okay, make file. Let's go to bin. Moment of truth. Nope, it didn't load. But let's see. Can we get shell mode? Okay, so we... Hey, it works at least. Cool. Hey, Catastrophe, welcome, good day. I was just setting up PowerShell support for Emacs. You're just in time for the good stuff. Um, okay, well, yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to actually, now that I've done this, which was just for, yeah, <laughs> it was just mostly for the lulls, um, we, might have to, we might have to work with Gonzo, who's the PowerShell master of the project, don't you know, um, on how to get this updated. But I'm going to say, so just looking quickly here, um, the new commands... We look at my make file so what i've been doing is as i mentioned before taking out postgres sql um 
Not that Postgres is bad. Postgres is really, really good. Um, if, you, if you need a relational database and an actual one um, that performs and has a pretty okay defaults, it's good. Um, but for the purpose of this website, actually, it turns out, um, and especially lately with newer versions of SQLite, um, the performance needs are met actually pretty well with SQLite versus Postgres. So that's been a to-do item for the project for a long time. Finally banged that out. And so here we are, not only with that change, but also the related workflow changes that go along um, with that. Because one of the reasons why we had to use Docker, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why we had to use Docker, uh, specific, specifically for Windows, is because setting up Postgres on Windows, I think, is probably a non-trivial affair. Um, I didn't wor really want to try to figure it out, sorry to say. So I just set up a Docker Compose that worked on all OSs. Um, <clears throat> Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hash that out. But I don't think much has to change. Just quickly looking back at this. Like, these commands going to go away. There's no more volume anymore. Um, and it's it all boils down to the workflow is now this. Docker build to build the container. Docker Compose used to do that for us kind of transparently before. Now we got to do it ourselves. So we build the image. Um, part of the cleanup. Removing the image. Um, and then, yeah, after we built it, we can get a shell inside the container, which can be useful for debugging. We can run the application. We can reset the database and run the application to distinct operations. Maybe you don't always want to spend the time to wipe everything. And then run the tests. Um, and, of course, the most important feature, as I mentioned to uh, folks earlier today, is when you run the website, uh, if you ever worked on it before, you can just go ahead and do this. And then we got a neat little... Uh, if you ever looked at the beta website, you noticed the little message up there, right? And uh, we can do a make Docker run. You do the same thing with the Docker container, right? You fire that up, and we got a neat little uh, Docker message right here. But ooh, I noticed that the debug toolbar isn't working. But I actually made sure to take the time to uh, allow that to be customizable. So check this out. You can do, like... Okay, I love Gonzo. Just put that in here. And voila, I love Gonzo. And that's gonna be that easy. And so that is obviously the Docker version of it, but we can do it, uh, let's see. Uh, yes, I've done this before, I love Gonzo. Boom. And so, yeah, um, and speaking of I Love Gonzo, discussing with Mr. Gonzo earlier about the possibility of running the website now on Windows without Docker. Um, <laughs> um, you know, we're going to need to solve the line ending thing, I think, before that's really a, <clears throat> something we really dive into. But I think it would be nice to not require people to have Docker on their computers um, and they would only have to deal with Python and all that stuff. So, yeah, OK, um, uh, a little bit of that all to lead into kind of the the you know the essence of what we're talking about today which is redoing the search page and so um you know the search we have on the website right now it kind of works right it's okay we can do like uh i don't know you know we'll just type tamriel in here and uh look at that 40 results not bad you know it gives us some good stuff but like i would want b I would want beaut. Oh, don't try this at home. Typo city here. I would want beaut to match beautiful cities of Morrowind. And it's like, in my opinion, a little silly that it doesn't. Right, exactly, Gonzo. Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And so, like, there's no reason why it shouldn't. Um, and so if we take a look at the website code, I'm actually going out of my way um, to do some fancy stuff, and the fancy stuff just isn't really working out. And what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean, we are using, you can see this line right here, we are using some Postgres SQL database specific stuff to try and do fancy searches um, using various parameters. And this code is somewhat complicated. 
things are happening here to kind of rank things appropriately. And, and my takeaway, taking a step back, is that it just doesn't work very well. It can't even do a partial match alone. You know, the ranking is useless. So what I wanted to do instead was delete it all. And I have done that. And I have started over with basically nothing. All we have now is probably one of the most basic Django view functions you could have. And all we do is... Opening it up here. We don't touch the database at all. We simply take the search query from the user. And we just, you know, put it onto the page here. And you might also notice this little, uh, you know, form, search form here. And this is a little bit of website archaeology that I uncovered this morning. But it's something I wrote, I don't know, maybe five years ago. And uh, it's almost ready to go we could almost completely just use this as is but yeah it's the makings of a, an advanced search function but before we get too crazy with that let's just make the regular this search work well so so right now we're not no results because we're not hitting the database we go into the code we're just this code right here says get the get parameter and you can see here it's a question mark q equals and so that would be the value or nothing and just uh, you know, toss that into the into the template. And so search.html looks like this. A little bit more going on here, of course, because it's HTML. But yeah, we got a, a conditional title here based on if there's a query or not. Um, hey, sector, welcome, good day. Um, and just other things that happen based on if we so if we have a query, um, search mods is another thing that I used to, you know, send down the pipe. Um, Actually, probably a lot of this is just going to get deleted. And we'll make it from scratch. But um, we really just want that outer if, and that's it, really. Yeah, if Q. Oh, wait, no. There we go. That's all we want. Um, But, yeah, this is the... Here we go. Cool. So, so ideally, then... Um, now we have something that we've searched for. We would go into the code and we would do something in the database, right? Like that's kind of what we're doing here in crazy land. We've got like blog entries when I used to do blog entries on the website and media tracks when I used to post those things on the website. Searching through those categories and all this stuff. Um, we're not going to do that exactly. Instead, Django has this thing called a queue object that allows us to do complex lookups. Um, I haven't actually used this in a long time, but I did use it way back when to implement a, uh, excuse me, uh, an advanced search, advanced search function for a different Django website. And yeah, the, the gist of it is basically like this. Um, so we're going to play around in the shell with it and see what happens. Oof, Gonzo, that's an interesting question. Um, so... I feel like if we do that, we should do that as like a static website on GitLab. And then we can like, ha we can use proxy magics to present it via the website. But yeah, I feel like stuff like that, I would rather have on GitLab or like the like the Lewis Skunk Works, for example, um, which you guys all had a great idea to make that a static website. So, you know, maybe, maybe we are due for blog. I don't know. That's an interesting question. I'm open to the idea. <laughs> I just assumed nobody was reading them, so I stopped doing it. All right, well, let's try it out, huh? Just putting that there for now. Let's open up the show, our friend. <clears throat> hey, welcome, welcome. Ah, thank you for joining us, Wacky Zach. Uh, that is an excellent question. So uh, this is the right place. Thank you. Um, we are, yeah, thank you for joining. Um, we are the right people to answer this. So OpenMW is an engine on which people can run Morrowind. True fact. The mods you have for MGEXE, uh, generally speaking, not compatible. However, you will find that oftentimes either OpenMW has similar functionality built in or something is available that's an equivalent. Um, we as a project, my website here we kind of make it a point to try and make sure we fill those gaps in so yeah if you got a something specific you got a question about please let us know 
Um, I would say your statement, OpenMW has much less mods for it. It's true. Um, there's a lot of mods that come out that are for uh, MWSC Lua and none of those available for OpenMW. So we're lacking in that category, but all the old ESP based mods uh, do work for OpenMW by and large. And there is a category of OpenMW Lua mods too. Um, so yeah, please got any questions about something you're looking for, let us know. And so yeah, right now we're just hacking on the guts of the website. Let's see here. Get that out. We'll go from, right? There we go. Thank you, Sector. Well said. Yep. All right. Um, so what do I got here? I got a, let's see, mod objects filter. So our, our raw interface to the database is something like this. Name equals uh, of forward. Boom. And that gets us the That gets us uh, the mod we're looking for with very crude um, parameters, though. Like, we, this is an exact name match, but we can do what's called an I contains match. Um, and that's the direction we're heading. But instead, we're going to make use of this Q thing here. And so if we look at this, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and assign this to our mod. And our mod here has a bunch of stuff we can look at, right? So we got a date. Update updated. It's been a minute since our record updated. Beautiful cities, Morrowind name, slug, all kinds of stuff. We basically want to search all of that, right? Description, usage notes. Um, all. You know, we got all kinds of information. You have many mods. You are on the potato laptop. Gotcha. Memory leaks. Okay. Why was OpenMW developed? That is an excellent, excellent question. Is it much more stable or can you push the graphical side of Morrowind further? Don't care for looks. Awesome questions. Awesome comments. Wow. So why was OpenMW developed? I, was, I am not the creator of OpenMW, so I cannot say 100%. But taking a step back at a high level, I think... It's actually more common that you might think where software developers will appreciate something, right? Like Morrowind. Like there's such a deep appreciation for Morrowind the game that they want to reinvent it. Not only so that um, they can appreciate it more, but when you, when you buy Morrowind, you don't have access to the source code. And that's important because it makes it a little harder to make modifications to it if you don't have the source code. Thank you, Sophia. Good call out. Yeah, absolutely. And so with OpenMW, we have, although the incredibly difficult task of like building from scratch a 3D game engine that's huge and complicated with some bugs that don't really make sense and actually aren't bugs, maybe design quirks we'll call them. Um, but now we have the source code. So we can do things like put not just put Lua cap capabilities into modding, but we can put it deep into the engine and integrate it and make the engine actually provide it um, in a different way. Um, Awesome call out sector. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, having source code also allows us to basically fix any bugs that come up, right? Like the, the MGE team does an amazing job of making the original engine work and stable and it's awesome. But with OpenMW, we do have the advantage of being able to just compile it, compile it, um, fix anything, right? If a user gets a crash, they can give us a dump and we can look into the code and kind of drill into it. Not saying everything's easily fixable, but yeah. Um, Whew. All right, so that was that was why was OpenMW made, right? Um, is it much more stable? Yeah, uh, it can support natively as a 64-bit executable, you know, uh, ridiculous amounts of RAM. Total overhaul mod list that we have on our website, I would recommend at least 32 gigs of RAM for your system. We found out last weekend when I tried to stream gameplay, 16 gigs doesn't work too well. 
Um, yeah, yeah, excellent questions, though. Thank you so much. Multiplayer is a game changer. I would say Sector's our resident multiplayer guru, by the way. Um, Starwind, as uh, was also mentioned. Total conversion of, like, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars, and Morrowind combined, and it just kind of works. All right, here we go. So, yeah, let's... Uh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, good call out, Sophia. Especially the the latest updates Zach has posted, right? Like, let's just show that on the stream real quick. I feel like that's worth showing this insanity here. Look at this. This is from the OpenMW Discord. Hop on if you're not there at the moment. But this is what Sophia's talking about, Ashlander Architect. So um, it's like a, I guess, fair to call it like a city building mod. Um, yeah, anyway, that's what's going on here. Just... You know. Hey, tapping it out. Yeah. Welcome. Good call out. Yeah, we're, you know, um, we're trying to make a Morrowind engine here. And then if you want different behavior, if you want different behavior, we can make the modding API expose that, you know, and and, uh, and you can make it how you want. So, yeah, right. Look at this. This is Ashlander Architect. Um, let me find another clip here from our friend Zach has a cat this one is also like this one blew my mind away because it's like wow you could like literally have a city building quest in the game <sighs> you know just like imagine the stronghold quest yeah Zach is my hero imagine the stronghold quest for your faction, right? Like, you ranked up, and congratulations, you get a stronghold, and here you go. Build it. I mean, that would be... Somebody mentioned uh, Dark Cloud for PlayStation 2. You find the village, and you have to go into the dungeon and build out the city. Like, stuff like that, or Act Razor, even, if you remember that from Super Nintendo. Um, pretty exciting stuff. I actually haven't tried this build yet. Might even just be on his GitLab, but just... <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah yeah Zach is my Lua hero um and this stuff is like super inspiring like I didn't think uh oh yeah Sim City thing I forgot about that as well I don't know if you could have a clip of that we could show too that's another kind of idea that I thought wow you know you could take like the best of Fallout 4 settlement settlement building you know and implement it probably by now for stalker games I, there might be honestly I'm personally not into Stalker, but I swear I remember. Here, let's see. Stalker Foss Engine. We're getting off the deep end here, but that's cool. Mm, Foss Game Engine for Stalker. Okay, no, that's the actual engine name. Hmm, okay, so this, yeah. Probably doesn't actually exist. It should exist. Open X-ray. Oh, Gonzo. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Uh, open X-ray. Ooh, you might be in luck, Wacky Zack. Check it. Look at this. Wow, here you go, my friend. Yeah. I think you want to look at this if you're into Stalker. Because <laughs> this is improved version of X-ray engine. So not exactly. OpenMW is not necessarily an improved version. It's a re-implementation from scratch. I'm not sure exactly if this is what this is. This is a drop-in replacement, 99% compatibility, not a goal of OpenMW. Um, but nonetheless, I think this seems to be what you're looking for, friend. <laughs> Pretty cool. Wow. I got to check this out. Anomaly. Okay. Stalker engine anomaly. Anomaly mod. Right, TES3MP is a good mod. Wow, okay. So yeah, when I want to check out Stalker, I got options. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. Logan's gone. Hey, welcome. Good day. Thank you for joining. Interesting. Open x-ray. Yeah, cool. All right, so what if I do something like this? Mod... Objects get Q. Let's try this Q thing out. Uh, 
let's see this link here real quick. Okay, yeah, interesting how the different communities have different uh, places where they go, right, to get things done. Archived and not available to watch. Sector, I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. I have no idea where to start with Stalker. I just have friends that like it, <laughs> and that's it. All right, let's do this code real quick here. So I'm going to have something that looks generally like a bunch of queues separated by pipes with the purpose of getting me I want to search name and description at the same time okay so we're gonna get our butte holy smokes hold on name starts with butte uh, let's just do that for now hold on There you go. I was just complaining about that, and we have already implemented the one thing that we were getting annoyed by. So, wow. wow. Slam dunk. Wow, we're having an amazing Stalker conversation uh, in the chats. <laughs> Santa, are you still here? Have you played Stalker? I feel like you would really dig it. Santa, one of my old IRL friends somewhere, who hasn't played Morrowind yet, by the way. <laughs> All right. All right. Wow. This is awesome. I'm pumped because we have now made Butte a viable search here. Hang on. And it's case insensitive. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I'm so happy. All right. So how do we do that on the website? Results. <sighs> so this is going to be interesting. We'll have to. I think I have some code somewhere. Here we go. Yeah, okay. You can merge query sets. It takes two query sets, merges them on a common key. The primary key, probably. Oof. Right? Thank you, Wacky Zach. I'm telling you. It, I mean, I definitely try to uh, call him out on it as much as I can and beat the horse often. I feel like, though, uh, when, when he plays the game, he's got to play vanilla first. You got to play vanilla first with no mods. I actually recently played even with vanilla textures on my Steam Deck, and I loved it. I used normal maps with the vanilla textures. Actually, I'm going to show that later in the stream. I loved it. It's awesome. All right, so let's see. Mo results, mods, mod, object. Or no, just get. Okay, we're using just get here. Is that what I used? Yeah, wow, well, sure did. Just get, okay. So this is going to be like a really complicated query, but I think for the best. Right, so. We're going to do first uh, name. I contains... Does my code not like undefined name mod? Ah, yes, of course. Um, those import mod. Okay. We're not gonna. The final page will not show the results mods. We're just going to put it there now so I can see it and know what the heck I'm doing. Morrowind on Android devices. Oh, yeah, it's wild. Um, I personally can't do touch screens. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm a, I'm a Steam Deck fan, but definitely loving having, like, on the couch just, where is it? Oh, no, it's back there. But, yeah, loving it, loving it. All right. What does this get us? Search.html. Okay, if Q, we got uh, 
results mods. Let's just try this out, huh? Enough hacking in the shell. I think I know what we're doing here. Ooh, good stuff. I'm gonna have to go through the chat and make sure to put all these links in the in the in the stream description. All right. Todd is awesome. Boom. Mod does not exist. Okay. I don't actually care if we can't find anything, right? We don't want the website to blow up. <laughs> Logan's gun. So, so uh, we make a website, moddingopenmw.com. Yeah, and uh, and so among other things, we got mod lists on the website and all that kind of thing, and you can search for mods on here. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So so you can search, um, and it's you know it's whatever doesn't actually do things you might expect search to do right like i was saying earlier you can type beaut and it doesn't match beautiful cities of morrow and like what the heck so um among other changes i made in the past day we're just ripping this out and redoing it from scratch in a more simple way that actually works um like people would expect and actually just now i've got my command line here and you can see here i did a this right here is a simulation of talking to the database and you can see right here, I asked it for Butte, and it gave me Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. So we have already made some success. And at the exact moment, I am trying to take this concept and put it into the code of the website, um, which the website, among other things, is made with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and in the back end, it uses Python, um, which is a, you know, it's a coding language. That's, that's pretty good. It's pretty okay. Um, and what happened here, though, is I, I tried to do that. I searched for Todd is awesome, which obviously is a true statement, but not the name of a mod. Oh, uh, so Publicans works for OpenMW. Um, Ashfall, uh, we have um, not enough features to fully implement Ashfall at the moment, but you can get some features from it. Um, and Bushcrafting, I don't know anything about. Sector and folks, help me out on that one. But yeah, we're, we're getting there, you know. So Todd is awesome, not actually a mod, which is okay, that's normal, but we don't want the website to crash. This is what has happened here. This is a crash page. When you're developing the website, it gives you information about what happened so you can make your code right. Um, in Python, when we want to make it okay to crash sometimes, we do what's called a try except. And we wanna do a mod does not exist. And then we just do nothing really, I don't know. Frostwind, yeah, yeah. Wait, what was the, hold on. Um, basic needs, right? This fella is an Emacs user. Yeah, Frostwind actually is probably more feature complete than this one, but this is an OpenMW Lua 0 0.49, I think, take on kind of a needs aspect. You know, Ashfall obviously does a lot more than just that. But uh, yeah, you might want to try this. Um, All right, wow, I'm, I'm excited because we already have a working query for Butte. Let's check that out. Um, let's reload the page. Can I, okay, hold up. Result mods. Okay. Cool, okay, Todd is awesome. Now let's try Butte. Beautiful cities of Morrowind. Yeah, 2090 will have all of that and more. That's right, Sophia. That's the attitude. It's a slower process for OpenMW because we're building the engine and the API at the same time, right? Yeah, we totally did it, though. Check it out. Butte actually works. So for comparison, old crap search, Butte, nothing. New barely working search, yeah. Okay, so, but we need a lot more, too. Um, we need not just the name, but we need maybe the description too, right? And so what I can do here is I can keep repeating this Q stuff over and over again for all the different fields I want to search for. And we can make a better search right here. Okay. It's not going to be computationally free, but hey, you know. I'm sure it'll be fine. We are killing it, yeah. 
I mean, uh, yeah, res absolute respect to that community too for providing a source of inspiration for us. And we're having a project to drive OpenMW Lua projects. I heard you like projects. Give you a project for your project. Get return more than one. Yeah, we don't want get. That's right. We want filter. But we're getting there. I personally, as somebody who does programming for my day job, I don't mind Lua as a programming language. Boom. Okay, check this out. So now that I've added description into the mix, we got a lot more results here, um, including mods that are simply related probably to beautiful cities of Morrowind, right? Okay, cities of more. Boom. Partial matches are a thing now. Woo. Wow, rainbow shader. Holy smokes, I haven't seen that. It should be easy. Holy smokes. I don't know anything about shaders, but maybe we could like poke Erm or something to do it because Erm knows about shaders. Right, exactly, Sector. That's exactly what I was thinking because I'm a shaders caveman, and by that I mean I absolutely cannot do it. But oh man, look, I'm so excited about this because look at this. We have a match on more with two R's. Just partial matching works, and I'm just thrilled to pieces. Okay. Let's go to our HTML because I'm already, I'm a little annoyed by this advanced search. Uh, form. I'm going to hide it for now. And for now, we're just going to work on delivering results from this stuff. We're going to present it in a table like what you see, for example. Uh, come on. There you go. Like on this page. And a nice little table here. <laughs> yeah, shaders are graphics programming in general is a bit above my pay grade. So I just don't go there. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Okay, so let's have my templates mod table. Okay, mod list detail. How am I doing it here? I don't want to actually use a HTML table. That's no good. Listed mod table. Here we go. Listed mod table. Here we go. Nowadays, you don't want to actually use a table element. There's something called a grid, CSS grid, which is just one approach to providing something that looks like what you would use a table for in, in the year 1999. Uh, but we're gonna, so we're gonna have our search results come out with something like this, kind of, I think. Uh, for now, I'm just going to copy it wholesale. All right. All right. This is going to break completely. Oh. There we go. All right. So, we, yeah, we got the empty table. Okay. Hey, not that bad. Okay. Not that bad. Okay, so... For let's change LM to just M. Ooh, actually, undo that because we're not dealing with listed mods here. Hold up, hold up. We're gonna have to be a little more thoughtful about this. Uh, okay. Mm, slug. Just gonna make that zero for now. I don't think we're going to show order just yet. Uh, we don't. Results. We don't have to care about parent. We don't have to care about parent. Hey, Altario, good call out. Welcome. And yeah, that's basically the, so uh, yeah, full disclosure as a, 
uh, as a as a user of Linux OS, I haven't used Windows in quite some time. You know, I can use Wine to run. Um, you know, I can use Wine to run the original game, even with MWSE. Check it out; it's gonna ho hopefully not tank my computer. <laughs> um, we can do all that, but uh, yeah, you know. Um, I don't personally have like a thing here or there about the open source, but that's a big deal for a lot of people. Um, no, I haven't seen the Reddit post. Whoosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Wacky Zach. Uh, thank you so much uh, for thanking me. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And yeah, uh, you know, it sounds like you and I probably got into uh, Morrowind and all that back around the same time because I do remember seeing Tamriel Rebuilt back when it first came out and thinking like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They'll be hopefully at some point done, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so welcome and thank you. And yeah, so here we are, Morrowind.exe on my Linux. But uh, the unfortunate fact about it is that, you know, doing it this way on Linux with a thing that lets you run Windows stuff on Linux just doesn't run quite as good as it does just on Windows, you know. Um, so, yeah, anyways, back to the website. Ooh, look at that. So just my crappy edit of the table already, like, got us our results in a form that's mildly presentable. Hey, hey. all right. Um... So we got to decide, honestly, like what information when you're searching for something. Right. I'm searching for leveling. What are the things that I want to see? Obviously, I do want to see the name. We're going to nuke step out of there, actually. OK. Just yank it out. <laughs> OK. All right. We're not just going to yank it out. We're going to put change me. Step num. Wow, okay. We don't want that there, but for now. All right, we're going to, I'm afraid, have to dive into the CSS. That's right, kids. Kids, we have to. Mod list detail. Okay. Okay. So this thing, you cannot simply just remove the column. Um, and it has some hard-coded widths here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, which is very unfortunate, but we're going to just copy it wholesale. Ah, yeah, Logan's Gun, absolutely. Um, I was actually trying to do that with the old uh, search that we had, which was terrible. Um, some of the code that I was using, probably wrong, was supposed to do that. Um, I consider that absolutely a goal of the search. Um, like, maybe we can see if there's some, you know, already written thing out there for, like, you know, like doing this or something like that. Common misspellings, I think we could account for. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, honestly, the combat mechanics are... Uh, thank you, Wacky Zach, for the comment. That's actually what, like, pushed me back from Morrowind at first, too. Tried it on the original Xbox, got killed by a rat. Thought I wanted to play Knights of the Old Republic instead. Or Final Fantasy X, or whatever else I was playing at the time. Uh, yeah, no, I'm with you. Amazing quests, depth, story, writing. And then, of course, the modding scene, right? And yeah, even in the in the days of 2004, 2005... Tamriel rebuilt was just like conceptually like wow <laughs> yeah well they are when you're like poking them with a short blade that you can barely lift all right uh so yeah what was I gonna do I was gonna copy the grid and we're gonna do this someday we're going to go through and actually sanitize the CSS because there's a lot of crap like this where I have grids that are kind of close. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Starfield, I, you know, I made it a point to, uh, yo, farmer, welcome. Oh, man, it's been a while. So glad you're here today, dude. Um, I told myself I'm waiting on Starfield until it reaches GOG.com, so it might be a minute. Uh, much to Smalio's dismay. <laughs> I hear her in the other room. 
All right, so what am I doing here? I'm going to change this to div search results. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't even think I want to click this. <laughs> wow, okay. I don't even want to ask who it is, but I think I know. And yeah, thank you, Gonzo. Um, case in point, I was complaining to Smalio earlier. I'm like getting ready for the stream and doing my normal thing, listening to Final Fantasy soundtracks. Final Fantasy 15 music comes on. I'm like, gee, I'd like to play this game. But, you know, Steam needs to phone home the DRM every time. And for reasons that's inconvenient to me. And I just don't even want to play it. That, yeah, that irritates me. Wow. Search results grid. Here we go. Ooh, 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 okay. Ooh, that's good. That helps, though. Ooh, did I do a bad copy here, actually? Hold up. I want to make sure I get everything. My CSS is terrible. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, wrong game, but yes. <laughs> we're not going there. Uh-oh, concerns for ES6. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go there, really, but I am not hopeful. Um, no offense to the team, and I wish them the best, and I'm sure it's going to be a good game. I love Fallout 4. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's another why did they make OpenMW answer, right? It's an engine that we own. Mod list. Right? Mod list detail grid. Okay, this is the one that I want. Sheesh. Let's do So we're renaming this guy here, search results grid. I'm probably not really doing um, CSS grid the best way, but it's going to give us the results we need. And, you know, it's a sh you know not great that we're going to hard, hard code stuff like this, but we'll, wor we'll work with what we got. Okay. <laughs> Oh no. I love GOG. I mean, you know, they make the Witcher games. I'm a big fan. Yes, true dad, Sophia, for sure. Yes, absolutely. Good call out, Wacky Zach. Yeah, good call out. And uh, the Xbox version in particular, right? Did really well. It wasn't until a few years later that I would play it uh, on a PC. What? So what did I do here? Oh my gosh. I just... <laughs> all right, all right. First things first. Could be the browser cache. If you've done any web development before, you know that the browser cache will destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> I played on my friend's Xbox, my roommate's Xbox. He swore to me. He's like, you're going to love this game. It's the best. It's better than anything on PlayStation 2. I only had a PS2 at the time. Um, and I'm like, surely you just. Boom, it was the cash. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, and just got, I remember kill, getting killed by a rat. And then for whatever reason, I came back and gave it another try. And uh, the rest is history, my friends. Yeah, according to leaked documents, I don't know. I call BS on that, but we'll see. Oblivion, yeah, I don't know if it needs a remaster as much as like a, I don't know what Oblivion me needs. <laughs> That's complicated. Yeah, Sector, you know, I was just thinking that, by the way. It's kind of our fault there is no remaster. I mean, they're probably like, yo, those OpenMW people, you know, they went ahead and uh, they went ahead and did that. All right, all right, all right, hold up here. So when I'm, let's take a step back, please. I have a question for everybody. When I am, when you're using the website, trying to find something, 
And you type, you know, for example, I don't know, like, you know, follower. Okay. What kind of stuff do we want to see? Obviously, we have the name of the mod. All right. We want to see that. Um, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to reorder this. Whoa, don't try this at home. Wow, wow. All right, here. Excuse me. Last modified. Ooh, yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Space Farmer. That's actually a really good call out. Sega, wait. Masters. Was that Sega Master System? Are you in the USA? I'm not sure what they call that in Europe or other regions. Na okay, thank you, Gonzo. Name, author, category, tags, description, static pages. Hmm, okay. Okay. Good call out. All right. I'll go. We'll start with that. We'll see how it looks. Uh, what did I do? So I did. Okay. We're putting the name back one. Name first. Oh, dear God. Okay. What happened? I'll show you. It's okay. Three F R. Then uh, yes, that's exactly right, Wackazack. Exactly. So, so just a, you just demonstrating. <laughs> Thank you so much for pointing that out. So, for example, you type B E A A U T. Right, it should reasonably find beautiful cities of Morrowind. Well, fret not. In the new code that I'm working on right now, right before you, Butte gives you some results, including beautiful cities of Morrowind. We're working on it. I'm gonna actually keep this one up here because that's a pretty good one, right? Or we can do con for concept. I mean, just look at that. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. I just had a breakthrough yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to implement. Um, I don't really use their search too much, but when I do, yeah, it works pretty good, right? It gives you what you want. And I want to give that kind of experience. Uh, you know, um, I don't think their website's open source. <laughs> their back end is certainly different than mine. But yeah, I just had a, a moment of inspiration, right, last night. And uh Got started on this. So, okay, so what do we have here? Before it gets lost in the chat here, let's put this in here. All right. Name, author. Yeah, okay. Of course. Oh, okay, yeah. It's, I don't search too much. Um, I'm not a... Because that's a deep rabbit hole, right? You could easily get... Okay, it's useless. Okay. You bet you could like just browsing the pages on Nexus, right? Like if I want to look for new New Vegas mods and I haven't checked in a minute. <laughs> all right, Space Farmer. I hear you. I'm not quitting. I like my job, actually. It's all right. <clears throat> all right, so here we go. Mod author. We can fix this easily. Check it. Come on now. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm derping. Here we go. Psh, got the author. You could argue this needs to be a little bit wider. So that'd be what our third one. Ugh, yeah, I need a CSS guru to come and save me from this horror that you see right here. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> um, all right. What, so what are we doing here now? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, job is job, work is work. Some work is fun like this, or maybe, you know, projects that you get to hack on, so. What else do we want to... All right, hold on. Help me out here. What else do we want to query on? So, query on, not just list, but query on. Oops. <laughs> That's no good. All right, that link is totally broken. We'll come back to that. What even is this thing here? Hold on. What did I do? Yikes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
mod detail. All better. Oh. Never remember. Mod, 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 mod. Here we go. Mod underscore detail. I'm such an idiot. There we go. Now it works as we expect. <laughs> there you go, Sector. That is beautiful. Well, hopefully our website search will be worth using again and a thing for Nexus Mods to envy. I mean, should we search like data paths too? I mean, plugin names? I mean, how crazy could we get? And how terribly will it run? Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I feel you, I feel you Sector. But it just made me think, you know. All right. Well, let's come back to it. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. And actually, I don't think we need that blob anymore. We got the grid working reasonably good. Whoa. So category. Okay. Category. Good. I like. Um, Shift that over just a little bit. Well, yeah. That would require like an external service though. That's a fascinating idea. And I'm open to the experimenting on that. But I, yeah, we would have to like connect to some LLM service of some kind. Seeing as I don't have one of those. All right, category. It's going to be that easy, folks. Pew. Oh, yeah? Hmm. You and your LLMs, Farmer. I swear, you're trying to push me over the edge. score <laughs> all right all right I'll punish myself here mod names yeah yeah for sure yeah 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 oh okay yeah <laughs> thank I was like hmm <laughs> yeah thank or mods categories all right S -s mod category detail Cool. So now the category shows up. You can click a link to the category. Blammo. Description. Um, so maybe... Okay. Maybe for... Further to what Gonzo just said. 91% of the time I'm searching for mod names, I would say. The Impresario. One of the best songs. 90% um, of the time when you're searching, plus, you're looking for just the name. And I feel like this, so like this box should probably just search for the name. Maybe the category or the, maybe like these four things, right? Like your this bar should search for these four things and that's it. And then we have the advanced search. For like if you want to hit like the plugin name or the folder path right like maybe somebody has a folder path in their config and they're like oh god what mod does this come from we could we could provide a way to search for that so yeah i like that gonzo that's cool we're gonna keep this simple let's go back to the python code 
Okay, and uh, so we're gonna have our four things we wanna search for here. And we're gonna do it down here. Okay. Let's see here, so we got name already. Let's do author. I'm sort of skeptical if this is going to work, but maybe it will. Hmm. A uh, link to a file list. What do you mean, far farmer? Like the file list that the mod has? Because, I mean, I would love to do that, but that's just way too hard to keep track of. Uh, category list is for... Okay. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll roll with that now. I'm honestly dubious that this is even going to work, though, this syntax here. Because the category is a different database table. Um, oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hey, this is totally broken. <laughs> Whoopsie. Here we go. Hold on. Yeah, we do. The mod detail page absolutely has a download page link. Um... File list farmer, yeah, I mean, I, that would be absolutely lovely, but I just don't know, like, how to feasibly keep track of that. Would main, maintenance would be, like, insanity. I would say, like, maybe 90% of mods never update, but the rest update often enough where it would just be a pain in the butt to be out of date. You wouldn't want to be out of date on that kind of stuff. Oh, my. Related field. Got, okay, no, 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 that's good. That's this thing. Don't search category, since that's what blew up. All right. Pull it from the API. Oh, like the GitLab API? Yeah, sure. Man, they got a HTTP API that we could pull JSON or whatever out of. Yeah, absolutely. Python, the back end language, you know, as you are aware, has great JSON support. We totally could do that. Um, the Nexus API, I doubt it. Yeah, well, Space Farmer, thank you. Thank you. That's excellent statement. And that's what I would love to do. Taking a step back with not just um, the website, but also with like the whole GitLab organization I have. So if you didn't know, if you're new to my project, we've got a GitLab organization with all of my mods and a few other people's mods on here. Peter McKeeve, uh, Peter McKeeve has a couple of his mods on here. Um, and, you know, they each have uh, like a website um, to go. I'm trying to find one here. Here we go. This is a new one I just made. They each have like a website to go along with it. And my long-term goal is to have something like this, you know, uh, easily available for people to use to post their mods. But we use the GitLab package registry and their, their building system and all that to end up with something kind of like this, which is a static website that's got information about the mod, a picture, download button, and it's all 100% automatic. Me as a mod author, all I have to do is save my changes and push it up to GitLab and everything happens automatically. Um, releases, dev builds, taking my readme and turning it into HTML and putting it on the internet. Um, so like this is just like one of the frayed ends of the long-term plan of making like a kind of a, you know, a nice ecosystem for all users. They have it for Windows. It's something called Wabajack. You can look that up. Um, but it's, yeah, it's Windows only at this point. Um, so, yeah. Those of us heathens on Linux got nothing. Someday we'll change that. Um, you played Mind Test Farmer. I mean, you saw their mod installer. It's awesome. Like, from the game, you can browse and install mods, games, and all that kind of stuff. There's no reason we shouldn't have that for OpenMW, in my humble opinion. Ah, okay. Got me on a soapbox there, friend. <laughs> It would be amazing, right? I mean, like, there's no reason OpenMW can't have a launcher that allows you to, like, in a nice way, browse and install mods. And, you know, there's no reason you can't do it from any, you know, I mean, you can kind of now with Mod Organizer too, but, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Sector. That's a good call out. And that they actually use as being the key p hard part there. I don't expect 90% of people to ever use mine, but what I hope is that I can attract new people into it, you know. Um, existing modders probably won't do it, especially with G7's, like, uh, <laughs> GitHub published thing. That's pretty cool. 
that makes publishing the nexus easier you know that takes like 90 percent of the headache away um boom descriptions all right so shoot um i feel like the main thing i wanted to do was re-implement oh <laughs> thank you sector yeah that helps a bunch for sure like uh you know i've got a couple mods on nexus and just updating it is like i feel like half the time i forget to update the right thing and then like the version is wrong and i have to go in and fix that um but i realize that's me being a caveman so shoot okay well let's take a step back and look at where we're at here um because i feel like we've done something pretty awesome today Ah, good question. Wacky Zack. MWSC is something that... Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Section 8. Yeah, basically it hooks into the Morrowind.exe engine and just changes things, fixes things, and, uh, and gives modders a way to do more, lots, lots more things, right? Including things the designers of the game never intended. And that's what MWSE Lua is all about, I think. Uh, the best hardware to run things like a Wabajack. Well, so Wabajack, thank you, Smallio. Wabajack itself, if we look at it, doesn't have, uh, no, 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 I'm not using this one. It doesn't have a hardware requirement, but what Wabajack sets you up with would require, you know, uh, potentially some beefy hardware. So let's look at uh, Enhanced. Yeah, here we go. By our friend OK Hi. OpenMW Enhanced is a Wabajack mod list for OpenMW based on largely my total overhaul list. And uh, you would need a good computer to run this. You're not going to run this on a potato. Um, like I said, 32 gigs of RAM. We'll put you in a good place. I have a graphics card from 2020, and I, I muddle through reasonably well enough at pretty high graphics settings. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe we can make a Wabajack list that's a little more simplistic and has lower graphics requirements. Absolutely, we could do that. Or whatever tool that automates mod list installation. Thank you, Sector, for clarifying. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Multimark, one of my personal, like, I gotta have it mods. And yeah, our friend Zach has a cat who did the architect mod we looked at earlier. He has done, uh, let's look at uh, multi arc. <laughs> Search can at least pull through with this. Um, Zach's Lua Multimark mod. I'm gonna go ahead and link that. If you're playing OpenMW 0.48 or newer, you're gonna want this one. Um, Personally, one of my must-haves. Okay, but this is actually perfect because I want to do a comparison of our old search and our new. And make sure that we're at least... Um, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. Such a dingus. I want to make sure at least that we're like for like, right? Um, so one thing I'm missing right here is a summary of how many search results I have. So let's go ahead and add that. If Q... Let's just say if results mod. So if we even got results. There we go. If we've even got results, excuse me, we're going to say, what's this? Uh, I got to look at my old code. I don't even know. What did I do? Here we go. Second level heading. Okay. Okay. We can do that. If search results. Let's see. Based on your proficiency with mysticism. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, there's a settings menu in Zach's Lua Multimark mod. Thank you for asking. That's a really great question. I'm just going to show you how it works right now. Since you asked, Wacky Zach. <laughs> um, and so this is also a preview at my work in progress mod list that I'm building that is largely based on vanilla Morrowind graphics with shaders on top to make it beautiful. So that mod list obviously also includes the Multimark mod. But yeah, if we just go ahead and fire this up, click the scripts menu, we got Multimark Lua. 
And here you can see we got some settings here that are available to us. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I could probably use uh, Smalio. You know, I could probably use it. Ooh, you could... Okay, so we could add a plugin. We could probably modify Zach's Multimark to do that as an optional feature. I highly recommend hopping into the OpenMW Discord Lua channel and suggesting that feature to Zach. I'm sure he would add it. But here you go. You can see skill requirement per rank, base mark count, how many you start with. Uh, do you want it to allow follower teleportation? Um, if you're not using Attend Me, you probably do want that. Um, and then, yeah, let's. it has a, like a usage window. Um, so here, I'll go ahead and show you. Go ahead and mark this up here. Okay. I'm going to pull up Recall now. And so, yeah, you see we got this nifty little menu, and this would be the usage window that we can turn off. I actually turned it off on my Steam Deck because I wanted the screen real estate. I know how it works. Uh, but, yeah, you just go ahead and click this here, and then, boom, there we go. Multimark, Lua-based. Um, so, theoretically, you could just, uh, you know, uh, change the options and have as many marks as you want. But, yeah, there you go. Wow. Okay, Sophia. That's good feedback. <laughs> I haven't really done a lot of research, but yes, Smalio and I have been talking, you know, what with last week, the failure of my PC. I was trying to stream last week and my PC, like, died midstream. Uh, ooh, okay, yeah. Uh, we could probably pull that off. Can we read disposition yet? Hold up. Man, this is these are some great ideas, Wacky Zach. I'm glad you're knowledgeable, knowledgeable about MWSE stuff because we need the inspiration. <laughs> but let's see here. Uh, open MW read the uh, here we go can we read disposition ooh i think we can hold up Dispo. get disposition we sure can there you go um so yeah <laughs> yeah, okay. Somebody's got to hit up Zach and be like, yeah, we got some nice ideas for Lua Multimark. Because um, I'm sure he'd be down to add them or take a patch if somebody wanted to add them. Um, but yeah, wow, lots of neat stuff here. We can look at their capacity, their faction rank. Wow, reputation. I haven't really... Uh... Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, you know, you could, like I was saying, you could totally play with like vanilla graphics and just add like gameplay stuff like Multimark and have a really heck of a good time. Yeah, you know what? That's a really great idea, Sophia. I actually do have a capture card, but I got it for my Mr. FPGA, so it's not like the best one. It does 720p really well, but anything else, um, yeah, right? We probably should get another one. Anything else it's not so great at? I, I was thinking about using it with my Steam Deck, actually. Uh, but yeah, that's actually a really great call out. Stream, st Steam streaming, yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a Steam link upstairs that I never opened, actually. <laughs> All right, you guys are distracting me. <laughs> Let's get our result in here. So, search results, right? That's what it says. How many search results? Um, we're not results, result, mods, count. Eh? Pluralize here is a nifty thing that will make it say results if there's more than one. One result. So if I type yout. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? Wait a minute. Huh? Uh, hold on a minute. Django template tag filters. I have got to be, rem there has to be a, hold on a minute. Has to be a count, right? Length. There we go, right? I knew I was just doing it wrong. All right, all right, back to here. 18 search results. But if we do... Oh, that's awkward. 
I need something with just one uh, gonzo. One search result. Is there a mod like Pack Rat? Feather effect with levels. Huh. I don't know if there is, but I'm actually trying to think, can we do that? So in OpenMW 0.49 development builds, we can uh, mess with spell effects. You could totally, right, like have some kind of a, a Lua controlled spell effect that gave you uh, like feather levels. That's another great idea, Wacky Zach. Gonzo, somebody ping me on Discord in our private channel about that idea, and we got to get that Lua Skunk Works idea going because a lot of these ideas are so great. I don't have enough time in the day to do them all, um, but somebody should. And that's what the Skunk Works project is all about, right? Putting the ideas out there, listing kind of the requirements and, and things like that and get people on their way. Let's go ahead and center it. The number is going to be bold, too. Oop. There we go. It's barely noticeable, but nonetheless, it's there. Let's put our... Beaut. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Beaut. Seven search results. Good. Mods matching. Matching. Beaut. Very good. Is that bold? I'll make sure I match that. Yeah, this is going to be bold. Whoop. Beaut. That's a butte. All right. I would say this is a functionally equivalent here. Here we go. What kind of knowledge and programming languages would I need to know to start to create mods with OpenMW? Ah, that's an excellent question. Um, if you have absolutely no programming knowledge whatsoever, as somebody who's done programming for like 15 years, it's really hard for me to say for sure. Um, but I would start really, really simple. Um, and kind of go from there. I find personally, it's easy to start with really low hanging fruit, get results, even if it is simple, you know, and that way you can like, feel like I'm, I'm making small steps and getting across the bridge to make your dream mod, you know? Um, and so to that end, I would say something like, for example, uh, I have this thing that I made that's like a template. Um, and it's not really ready for general consumption. Possibly, Smalio. Yeah, for, Monathons are always great repositories of excellent works. Um, and so if you wanted to know, like, how to make an awesome player home, you know, go check out, you know, uh, Summer Mod Jam and, and there were player homes and, and all kinds of great stuff. But uh, ba back on this, though, so, like, I made this template. And, again, the template is not really ready for general consumption, but I'm going to put a link in the chat so you can look at it. This is some Lua code that I wrote with the intention of being like really, really descriptive so that people can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. But this is a stupid, simple mod that does one thing, and that is when you play the game and you press the H key, it shows a message on the screen. Um, and I would start with something simple like this. You know, if you've never used Lua before, maybe even like start out with doing the the traditional hello world but uh yeah wacky zach please i would encourage you hop into the open mw somebody give this guy a link uh to our discord hop into our discord we got a lua channel we got a modding help channel we've got our website channel and we're happy to help you on your journey if you're wanting to make that jump that's awesome um but yeah that would be my rough advice thank you so much sector appreciate it All right, so we're going to finish this out by saying we need to come here now with nothing and, and recreate sort of the aesthetic, which, uh, hey, I think we can do better than that, actually. Because <laughs> we basically, there we go. So, uh, yeah, if Q. Otherwise, I think really we can just do this. How about this? Hey, Hunger, welcome. Welcome to the chat. And, uh, and the stream, thank you for joining us. I'm glad you're here today, and I hope you're having a lovely day, as we are. Just adding a better search 
component to the website. So, okay, this is what's going to show if there is no thing. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here, so. Good. Okay, good. That's what we want. All right. So this is going to show up if there's an empty queue or no queue at all. Boom. Yes. All right. This is what I want, folks. All right. Mod database search. All right. Please use the search bar at the top of the page to search mod in the database. Name, author, editor, and description will be searched against. Ah, uh, you heard it here for first, folks. Pre-2090, we will have advanced search. <laughs> I'm not joking, too, because we got this right here. Really, it's just a matter of, like, uh, building out the form. Let's go ahead and unleash that again, huh? Scroll to the bottom here. We got the advanced search form. So that just we just need a button and really to flesh out uh, these fields. And, I mean, for a mod, there's a lot of potential things we would want to provide for an advanced search. Um, a basic search maybe needs just a few things that the user might reasonably expect, including being able to find beautiful cities of Morrowind when you type beaut in. Um, but, yeah, here we're going to need to provide, you know, searching categories, Searching plugin names, searching data paths, BSAs, ground covers, usage notes, settings. Aha. Uh -huh. I think this is uh, related to the typos thing that somebody. So, BCOM, you could consider to be a typo. Should BCOM return Beautiful Cities of Morrowind? Maybe, probably. Um, but that's a stretch goal for now. <laughs> and and because because what we're doing if we go back to my code we are literally asking the database I need a mod whose name case insensitively maybe contains the thing or the author maybe contains the thing or the description maybe contains the thing um, that's getting a little complicated that's a lot more complicated than it sounds but it is a great idea and I'm not against it that's just a lot more SQL wizardry um, and so what we got going on here, here, this mod objects filter thing, this is our Python interface to the database, and this Q thing here helps us do more complex queries, but that's like getting pretty insanely complicated. <laughs> yeah, easier said than done. So, I mean, one thing we could do, though, is maybe we could, um, let's do this. Let's pretend we know what we're doing here. All right, from. From um, W models import mod. Yeah, that's a great question, Wacky Zach. Um, so is it complicated to implement? No. So actually, I would say no, right? So being able to say, being able to go from this that doesn't work and this that that does work if it was actually running hold up <laughs> so being able to go from this that doesn't work and this that does work is actually less code it's actually less complicated this is all the code right here um and if you don't know how to code if you're not familiar with python code before i mean you know we're looking at a dozen lines of code. This is not bad. This is not complicated at all, really. Um, the complexity is hidden from us behind this code, which comes from the framework that I'm using, right? So, for example, when you write OpenMW Lua mods or MWSE Lua mods, you're using their framework, which is code they wrote, so you could write your code. Um, that's what this stuff is right here. This is probably complicated, but we don't have to worry about that. And, yeah, it's all, all I had to do 
was provide a way to get the text from the user. That's what this is right here. We're getting the, the text that you put in. We're saying if it's there, go ahead and check the database, right? Um, and so this is, again, why what Gonzo suggests is a little tricky because we can access the name, sure, but like ax breaking the name up into separate words and checking the first letter of words, a little more complicated. Uh, I would probably, if I were going to do that, going back to the shell here, if I were going to do that, oh, let's say m equals, come on, mod objects get name patch for purists. Oop. Hey, hunger, awesome! Yeah, well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, you know, as a, as somebody who does this kind of professionally and for fun, I always wondered like. Is this fun to watch? I don't know, but hey, I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and so, okay, we got mod patch for purists. Okay, we can say the name. Okay, all right. So this is a this is a good one because we can say name. We can split it up on a space. Actually, I don't think we need to specify anything now. We got patch for purists. Cool. So we have three parts. Um, <laughs> We go play. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sector. That's right. Normally Sunday we are supposed to play, but I got a little crazy yesterday with like doing some new crazy stuff. And so that's why we're here reinventing search. That's just how it happened. Came for the Morrowind, stayed for the Emacs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I'm humbled. Yeah. Emacs would be my text editor that is that was invented in the 70s. Uh, <laughs> all right. So it's easy enough to take a name like Patch for Pyrrhus, get, you know, three words and say, okay, for, for, we're, for word in we could say print word and I think this is a how to just get the first one here PFP monkey hey welcome thank you for joining I'm glad you're here uh, and that's an excellent question um, thank you for asking wow so First off, Sector, do stream, and I would love to watch you hack on Dreamweave with Emacs, and you should do that. Uh, monkey, uh, total overhaul list does not work okay with TES3MP that I know of. It would be it would be tricky because there's so many scripted mods and stuff in there, right? Um, a lot of – thank you. Oh, okay, Sector, wow. Sector being the, by the way, the multiplayer guru, I would say, uh, here. So, wow, yeah, okay. I stand corrected. Maybe it would be okay if you just remove the stuff that's not directly compatible. Um, Space Farmer. Would I approve, only approve of using software that is at least 20 years old? No, no, no. I can't. Because OpenMW, for example, isn't yet 20 years old, right? So we couldn't say that. But <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I'm a, enough of an old man. So would it not be simpler to get it to look for letters in order that you type in? So let's say BCM. You just type it in, sit, type it, and it would come up. Hmm, okay. Um, interesting. So that is a that's going a little bit more. Good question, Wacky Zach. I appreciate that. Um that that would be doable, and that would be, I think, the I, uh, a future. I wouldn't say the next level, because there are a few a few levels for the search engine to level up. But like a few levels ahead of where we're at now would be something like so. You'd come here, right, and you'd say, like, B-E, and and maybe not just ignore this thing here, but, like, maybe this might update kind of in real time. Um, and so you could kind of see your results more quickly. I think maybe that's kind of what you're touching on. Um, or... or I think I think in any case, in any, any way we look at it, we still need a way to tell the database... When I'm when I want when I say PFP, I mean patch for purist. That's what we really want, right? Like, so yeah, that system wacky Zach combined with a way to say right PFP, give me patch for purist. Um, <laughs> amazingly, so so it pulls up Alvazir's patch for PFP because in the description it says PFP. Um, this one also in the description will say PFP. Um, but we want that to match the name, and I think that's a stretch goal, and I think it's doable. But it will be uh, – so going back to what you asked before, like what's the bottleneck to get it working? How will, will it affect the performance? Um, that's an actually really excellent question. And maybe if you've been watching me for a minute, you notice this little thing up here. And this will be – come on, open it up. There we go. 
Do we have a tag section? Yes, we do, Space Farmer. And remind me in just a second because we're getting down the performance rabbit hole right here. So this thing right here is the Django Debug Toolbar. Django would be the Python framework. Again, framework being the thing that lets me do cool stuff like that. Uh, that I use and the debug toolbar lets me poke into the code of my website and see, you know, how I'm performing. So with more inaccuracy rather than bring up zero search results. Agreed. That's why this is bad, right? Like that's why this is bad. Nothing for Butte for real. Anyway, back to the debug toolbar though. Uh, one important thing that it gives us that we need to know about because our website has a database, right? We have all the mods in the database. We need to know, that's where like most of the work is gonna be on the database. We need to know how much work we're hitting the database with. And we have this little thing right here that uh, SQL is for the database. And this tells us how badly we're hitting the database. So, so for example, let's find a page that's a little more fun here. Uh, Cause my SQL database interactions are not always the best. Uh, yeah, Wacky Zach, I am the owner and creator of the website. That's right. Um, I am editing it. You'll note right here, this URL, I'm editing it local on my website. You could download the code yourself and run it. Um, the website is open source for anybody to edit, Space Farmer. Um, yeah, 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 that's great. Like a suggested thing. Yeah, awesome stretch goal. Wow. <laughs> no, it's okay. Welcome. You know, hey, it's your first stream. Um, and, you know, so here we are. And uh, to answer your question, Monkey E, OMW scripts are presently incompatible completely with TES or MP. So anyway, we're going to go to a more fun page to look at the performance here. You'll notice 98 queries for this page, by the way. Just for the main page, check it out. 275 queries to bring us the 507 mod total overhaul page. And if I click this, we get a really cool breakdown here that basically tells me my code is trash. Because <laughs> we've got... An important detail here, 255 similar queries duplicated five times. And that just means I'm making the database server do a lot of extra work. But you will note that if you go to moddingopenmw.com and if you click the total overhaul button, it loads reasonably fast, actually. So, like, as much as this would give you the impression that my code is trash and it's actually not really that great. Um, I even lost the page, but nonetheless. Yeah, it's actually like this query is very bad. Having these results is very bad. It still runs well, though, um, you know, and we do other things to to get there. So, yeah, great question about performance. I always love looking at the toolbar, the debug toolbar. All right, so we need to go back here. Um, so let's say we've got our, our heck, uh, we got our, let's just say our, is this, A is this. And we're going to say A word. Just humor me here. And so now I have PFP. And so I could so I could have a little this is not a lot of code really. I'm taking the name, splitting it, I'm looping. So this is where you get problematic. If you're not familiar with coding, this four is where you start to get into trouble, or at least computational complexity. Um and and this will increase in complexity with how many words are in the name. You know, we're splitting um, not the worst code, but it's something to keep in mind. Every time you bust out that four, you're opening a can of words, worms. <laughs> uh, but that's how we got PFP. So, I mean, we've seen that it's possible to take Patch for Purists, programmatically get PFP in a way that's not too terrible. Um, could be a stretch goal. Or maybe we could have a field, right, um, on the mod. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this. Class mod. And so we can have a field here, a property. We got clean name. Maybe we could have pro property def abbreviated name. So we can just return. So so let's take a step back. What do we do here? We got the name. So so split name self name split if. Uh, if split name for
At Preprev, did I uh, thank you. A brave name. So, oh man, what did I just do here? Okay, so I took what I had in the terminal there and I made it actually usable on the website. I mean, uh, let's see if this works. Hold up. Hold up. So just for funsies. Just for funsies. Just for funsies. Let's narrow it down a little bit more. Patch for purist. Purist. No, that's not what I wanted. What? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh -uh. Where, no, no. That is almost what I wanted. Hold on. Look it. Look it. Watch very carefully right here. PFP. And in fact, we've done it programmatically for basically every mod. Oh, no. It does just work. Look at that. Boom. So now let's search for it. We want to search for PFP and get patched for purist. I want to search for PA and get Project Atlas. We can do this. All right. I th I think. I actually don't know. Um. Because it's not a database field. But hold on. Let's just. Ooh, whoa, whoa! Don't try that at home. Yikes. It's not a database field, and this only searches database fields. I'm going to make it blow up anyway, but let's try it here. Um, um, so we could make it, by the way. We could make this a database field easily and populate it when we fill the database. I think that's a last resort, but I think we should go that route to enable this because this is a very important thing to have. Wow, we I'm excited. BCOM. It's going to happen here. Ooh. Yeah, brev name into field. Mm, okay, so the question then is... Can you even do that with Q? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so for now, it's going to remain a stretch goal. Sometimes, in this case, it doesn't just work. But it's totally doable. And what we would do is we would go back here. We would erase this. Gone. We're not using that. But we would add instead here. We've got, uh, where is it? Name. And we would say a brev name. And then when we go through the database crunching part, we would simply execute this code. You're going to make me do it right now, aren't you? Data mod. Data, right? No, 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 no. Okay, so that's where this code lives. Helpers. Yeah, here we go. Generate mod. Right? So what if we what if we just did this? What if we just did right up here? So we can say uh, split name new name split I don't even think we need that. For word in split name. Word. And then we'll say new, new type here. <laughs> Mod update. All right. The moment of truth is upon us. Either the code is going to blow up horrifically, or it's going to work and just work. Rev name. Uh, right? Yeah. That's it. All right. Here we go. Only one way to find out. All right. While that's going. Yikes. We came so far today. <laughs> oh man, that's so flattering. I love David Hayter as a voice actor so much. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. 
That's like truly humbling. I'm a big fan of David Hayter. It's kind of why I was a hater of Metal Gear 5. No offense to Kiefer Sutherland. But uh, thank you, Anger. I appreciate that so much from the bottom of my heart. Holy shit. Colonel, why aren't you telling me? <laughs> oh, man. I'm a Raiden fan, too, though. All the way. Jack is the man. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. The Thag voice. Yeah, okay. So, and if you uh, haven't played Starwind, I also voice one of the characters, uh, Thag. And a hidden character, too. <laughs> Smalio helped me uh, method act Thag. Uh, okay, let's see here. Non-nullable field. Okay, let's take a step back here. All right. We got to do some weird stuff here. All right, so... Um, well, okay, let's actually see the option. One off default, okay. So we're gonna say default here is gonna be. Cool. <laughs> I've been doing the snake voice for like 20 years. I can't help it. How can you not play that game and be like, Colonel? <laughs> all right that blew up before and i wanted it not to well so weird mistake weird i mean guys i guess kojima felt like he wanted a movie star in his game you know is how i understand it and i can appreciate that but like <laughs> Incidentally, then, Snake suddenly has 90% less, fewer lines. You know, he barely says anything. How about that? Seems like a step backward to me, but yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, well, I got to say, um, David Hayter was awesome as Zengetsu in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It was cool to see him in that one. All right, well, geez, while we're waiting for this to crunch, gosh, we did so... We did some cool stuff today, uh, but namely, we got this search rewritten. I'm checking that off because we're basically, we have more features than the old search had with a simpler database that is easier to run. My Emacs can speak PowerShell now, which uh, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but hey, look at that colors. All right. Um, and so Gonzo, maybe you and I will link up after the stream. Uh, you know, we'll have our little chit chat and We'll go over what needs to change for this. Um, I think until we solve the line endings thing for Windows people, uh, we're going to want to stick with Docker, I think, is the recommended workflow. But um, we certainly want to solve this situation here with the uh, uh, line endings. I had the idea to look at you know other open source projects um, and see how they're making it work, right? Surely many programs are written by people on all kinds of operating systems. Surely they've solved this problem, and surely we can do what they do. But... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think a lot of this has to change, really. So um, it would be super cool if somehow we could get Windows people to use make files, but uh, <laughs> we won't go there too much. Uh, all right, here we go. So, okay. Please use the search bar at the top of the page. So hold up, hold up, hold up. We're going to go ahead and put this thing back behind a comment. Should you be using make? Uh, well, that is the, thank you, Gonzo. That is the intended uh, workflow tool for the for the code base, but uh, we'll talk more about that. <laughs> is the intended because, why is that so? Because if you look at the make file, I mean, everything you need to do to interact with the code base is here for you, right? Like, oh, I want to run tests, it's that. You know, I want to run the shell, it's that. Um, the problem is, though, it's very, like, Unix-y, you know, and I'm not really sure how Windows will work with it, if at all. Right, like how many Unix assumptions am I making? I don't really know. Excuse me, but if we could make like a, if we could take your PowerShell script or maybe have a different PowerShell script that could approximate like being just a, a simple entry point to basic commands, I think that would be really cool, you know, to make our friends on Windows, um, you know, make their lives easier and, and help them edit and, and hack on the website along with us all. So, okay. Please use the search bar at the top of the page to search mods in the database. We don't need to capitalize mods, friends. We do not need to do that. 
in the uh, data. Name, author, and description will be searched against. Advanced search coming soon, pre-2090. All right. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and push that up to the beta version of the website so you all at home can check it out and let me know what you think. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I feel like for my friends that are using Mac or, or Linux or BSD even or whatever, Unix of some kind, you know, the make files, what they're going to want to go with. But for people on Windows, like maybe PowerShell is better or maybe there's something else that's better for Windows. I don't really know, but I'm definitely interested in, in, in making that experience good. OK, so, yeah, uh, as I said, I'm putting this out there so you folks at home can try it out. Let me know what you think of the new search on the website. So right now I'm going to be ute. Right now it doesn't work. We're going to wait for this text scrolling by to scroll by some. And then I'll refresh the page and it will work like magic. Um, what's happening here, this text that's scrolling by is basically my computer is sending commands to my server to make it ready to run the website. Then it's going to put the code to run the website up there and then it's going to run it. Maybe what I need is xmake. Dude. Or something like that, right? Um, Yeah. Something like that that does cross-platform better. Yeah, I would rather look at how Make works on Windows first, but XMake is dank. Uh, your friend showed that to me the other day. We were chatting with your, your Artifactory buddy for Dreamweave, Dreamweave stuff, and uh, I was impressed just looking at what they were doing there. So, Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's my that's my mentality with Windows, honestly. <gasps> Okay, what blew up? Something blew up. This is no good if you didn't. I think I know what happened, though. Hold on. No? Okay. Yikes. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay. Oh, I think I know. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, error two. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> How can I not know? Uh, all right. Well, uh, so yeah, my my deploy script is not rigged up yet for the Postgresless world, and so um, I had to go in there. And what I did was I right here I deleted the this M O M W D B S Q L I three. That's the database. It's just the file now. Um, yeah. Okay. It's gonna work this time. I know it. <laughs> Yikes. All right. So shoot. I really wanted to get into some uh, playtime with my new mod list, Just Good Morrowind, um, which again is vanilla textures with normal maps and some gameplay mods that really make my day. Um, I suppose I can do that while this is baking. Here we go. Right. Here we go. I'm going to move this down over here. That way you can see my nifty compass. My level 49 character just... Uh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, I was uh, doing some temple quests is where I left off. <laughs> uh, Honger, yeah, I try, I try to stream every Saturday and Sunday, actually, this time, um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central USA time. And uh, usually I'm hacking on the website like I've been doing. Uh, occasionally I'll fi I might even play the game sometimes. Sometimes I'll create mods couple weeks ago we wrote my signpost fast travel mod which uh, you're about to see in action here we go come up to a signpost click it boom travel just like in the witcher 3 um oh wacky zach asking the philosophical questions now yikes okay um it's a bit of a newer game series but honestly the xenoblade series is pretty big for me i loved xeno gears on ps1 and the writer is just like in the vein, uh, <laughs> in the vein of the writing for Morrowind, you know, and like the whole story behind the tribunal and the heart and all that stuff, Xenoblade one and two both like resonate with me on that kind of like a Gnostic storyline that I just love. Um, and they just yeah, so so you know, obviously Morrowind, Xenoblade, um, and that third one, yikes. <sighs> have to be one of the super nintendo final fantasies but it's so hard to pick one witcher 3 of course is great and isn't one of my top games but uh definitely not my top three 
Sorry, Smolio. <laughs> oh, man, it got dark fast. Xenoblade. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's Xenoblade Chronicles with an X. Yeah, for it's a Nintendo Switch series, actually. Um... I think you can run it in emulators. My luck was not really so good with that, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, ooh, we're almost done over here. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really, it's very anime, um, which I'm not like a totally in anime a lot. But nonetheless, just like the story, holy smokes. First computer game I remember playing has to be Carmen Sandiego for Apple II at school probably. Uh, or Oregon Trail. Or, no, 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 um, yeah, Santa, back off. No, no, it's even before that, right? Super Mario Brothers for the NES. I don't know, computer game, I'm a derp, yeah. Computer game, definitely Carmen Sandiego, or you got my mind racing thinking about games in general. <laughs> Not console, yeah, probably either, either Carmen Sandiego or Oregon Trail on the Apple IIs we had in my, in my uh, school. 1991, circa 1991, folks. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Back to the game. Yeah, so I was... Uh, the fourth corner of the House of Troubles is Sheogorath. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to find Gamble Putty. i actually never done this quest before, kind of going for it. Yo, Hitman 2, awesome. The You mean uh, the PS2 Hitman 2. Awesome. Colobot, ho. Oh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Are we done, by the way, over here? No, still working. Colobot, I gotta look that up, hold on. Colobot Gold Edition, huh? Neat. Oh, wow, neat, cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Old Hitman 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, it was a console. Personally, in my house, we never had a PC. My my dad rightfully thought I only wanted it to play video games. <laughs> and he was not wrong. I definitely wanted to play Diablo 2. Ah, this is pretty cool. Commander Keen. Wow, nice. Catastrophe, are you here? He's my Commander Keen guy. Oh, King's Quest. Nice. You know, I distinctly remember seeing um, Another World on my uncle's. PC and thinking like, whoa, that's awesome, right? Like, the animations are incredible. All right, hold on. The website's updated now, real quick. Let's just see our results working like we want them to, right? So before, you ready? I'm going to refresh. After. Wait, no, that's not it. Hold on. <laughs> that's not it, I swear. I lost the tab. I have way too many tabs open. Or did I close it? All right, hold on. Yeah, I closed it, I think. So anyway. Oh, no, wait, it is. Oh, it is working. It's just, the, it's our friend, the we, the web cache. DOS Duke Nukem's. Oh, yeah. So the first Duke Nukem I ever played was uh, Duke Nukem 3D. Wow, something totally didn't work. <laughs> I'm going to have to figure that out. I fully expected to see the new thing here. Hold on. Let's go into the search for command. Locutus, yeah, that Locutus is the name of one of my PCs in my house. Uh, it's uh, I have two Rock Pro 64s, and and Locutus is one of them. Golbez is the other one. Golbez being uh, from uh, it's a demon name, I think, but it's for me from Final Fantasy IV. Okay. Um, oh man, it's not working. What gives? So wait, sanity check time. Desert Falcon. Oh wow. Okay. Even Duke Nukem Forever. Okay. I've, uh, to be fair, haven't played it, but that's cool. I I'm, I'm assume, Sophia, that you know about E-Duke 32 then, right? E-Duke 32. All right, so something fishy is going on here because it works on my local version of the website, so I'm going to have to work that out. 
but yeah, eduke32 is what's up. I actually maintain a, there we go, eduke32, if we go to my, I actually maintain an eduke32 package uh, for Void Linux. I'm a big fan. If you like Duke Nukem, yeah, Duke Nukem for sure. I mean, I want to make a cabinet for my mister. We can have the DOS version running on that. Those alien bastards are going to pay for shooting up my ride. I can do a John St. John, kind of. <laughs> All right, wow. Yeah, I did the Duke Nukem. Groovy. <laughs> wow, thank you. John St. John is another great one. Uh, you should play The Conduit 2, where he does the voice of the main character in that one. So, wow. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I practice that while driving and in the shower. <laughs> All right, so we did the PSQL SQLite 3 migration. It's done. I, I think it basically works. Conduit, Space Farmer, you know what I'm talking about. We both used to work at HVS at different times. Um, I got to fix this, though. I don't really know what the deal – what's going on here? I don't – this should have updated. Clearly, the deploy – this thing said it worked, but, like, I'm skeptical. So we're going to have to – take a closer look um after the stream but i thank you all for joining me today uh it's been a lovely fun day hacking on the code of the website fixing the search we're gonna get that out there to you all in addition to our much awaited uh 6.0 uh major release that's coming up um so yeah uh thank you again for joining have a lovely day happy modding and we'll see you next week thank you <laughs>